IKEA is everywhere. And at least in North America and Europe, there's a high probability that pretty much every person you know has at least one IKEA item in their home or more. But how did this become normal? To the point that IKEA's biggest competitors are giant publicly traded companies that don't even sell furniture as their main focus. So to answer this question, I want to take you on a deep dive to understand how exactly IKEA became the world's most dominant furniture retailer by using smart psychological design techniques that manipulate you into buying their products. This manipulation starts before you even set foot in the showroom, as even the escalators are strategically placed to subconsciously influence your thoughts and your feelings before you've even seen what's inside. You may have noticed this, but IKEA are very careful in choosing to opt for standalone, purpose-built warehouses rather than simply snapping up spaces in pre-built high street stores or retail parks, as not only is industrial land a lot cheaper per square foot, but it removes a ton of the constraints that a retailer would otherwise have to work around. And what this does is allow IKEA to design every single square inch of the architecture and their in-store experience from scratch, which then optimizes every single tiny detail to increase their sales to you, the customer. Typically, IKEA stores have at least two levels, and the journey always begins from the very top. As you begin to slowly make your way up the escalator through a double height entrance space, unknowingly you may start to experience feelings of excitement and anticipation for what you're unable to yet see. As you're transported to a whole new environment where you can no longer see where it was that you once came from. And even what is in essentially a glorified warehouse, this is already massively more appealing architecturally than your typical furniture retail experience. This is because in architecture, this kind of movement through space is known as procession, where the travel between two areas is utilized to cause you to experience certain emotions specifically chosen by the designer. In this case, setting the stage for a whole concoction of psychological techniques through the designer's ability to influence your movement through the space. Once you're inside, you get to the infamous maze, which is their showroom. Now, IKEA could have very easily just taken the traditional furniture retailer approach and put everything out on display with no walls, which would have made navigation far easier and it would have made what you were actually looking for much easier to find too. But no, 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 this would be far too easy. Instead, IKEA force you through a one-way labyrinth of dimly lit rooms that almost make you feel like you've gotten lost in someone else's mega mansion, as all of these rooms are staged complete with TVs, books, remotes, framed photos, and even fake windows. This simple concept of staging furniture may seem like nothing new, as retailers have been doing this for years, but this is pure genius from IKEA for a number of reasons. Firstly, by placing the staged furniture in a room with four walls, they create a sense of familiarity by using scale, as seeing an actual realistically sized living room with four walls rather than an expanse of sofas and armchairs is something that we're actually used to experiencing on a daily basis. And by default, we compare these spaces to our own homes, which often makes them feel aspirational or even inspiring. And on an emotional level, this can create a really strong connection to IKEA products, even encouraging idea generation. So, yep, that's right, you guessed it. It makes you want to buy even more of their furniture. This is only emphasized by the fact that they have interior designers with years of experience carefully curating these spaces, who implement what are often really overlooked interior design techniques that many people rarely even consider in their own homes, such as dim and layered lighting, complementary textures and colors, and even music and other sensory cues, which create a space that makes you want to just linger in it. 
and only in between a myriad of these room displays you'll be able to find more typical brightly lit showroom areas so that you can actually find, analyse and compare the items that you are interested in in isolation. And boy oh boy, once they've lured you to this point, good luck getting out. While you're in this maze, without realising, you may start to find yourself going, oh, wow, that is so cheap, or whoa, this product is such good value. And quite rightly so, as some of IKEA's products are outrageously affordable, to the point that it's actually a little concerning environmentally, but that's a whole story for a whole other video. The real reason that everything else in the store tends to feel this way is due to a very clever retail tactic called price anchoring, where high ticket items such as sofas are placed first to make everything else in the store feel progressively cheaper, which is a little bit like how in Costco they bring you past all of the TVs, electronics and jewellery before all of the produce which is likely why you may have found yourself a little bit shocked at checkout if you've ever found yourself there with a three-figure grocery bill. What you may notice is that by using this processional route, IKEA are able to show you the exact same product multiple times by simply placing them in different environments, which may seem just a little bit lazy, but it's all designed in. This is another technique which is called framing, where items that are shown repeatedly in different settings increase the chance of persuading a consumer to purchase it, as it broadens the target audience in order to show how an item may appeal to different demographics or types of individuals. This tactic is often paired with emotional appeal, where these items are presented in such a way that they will appeal most effectively to a particular targeted audience, like how a contemporary studio apartment display might be targeted at young professionals, contrasted against the same item in a room that's in a more traditionally styled dining room, which may cater to an older audience or different financial demographic. And all throughout this journey, this is only compounded by a sense of urgency as many of IKEA's products are parts of limited runs, which is why you sometimes see that last chance label, meaning that there's no guarantee that you're going to be able to get it if you decide to go home and sleep on it. And when this is paired with the thought of items running out of stock, which they frequently do, it creates a really powerful concoction of emotional responses all geared towards the climax of a final purchase. You hungry? Very hungry. <laughs> hey, you hungry? Now this is almost comical, but you have to respect how this long journey through the showroom all ends, which is with the kids section, followed by the restaurant, where IKEA have pretty much perfectly placed soft toys, followed by french fries and meatballs, one after the other, almost too perfectly for weakened parents, which is basically like taking candy from a baby. As even if you don't have kids who have been forced to behave themselves for the last 30 minutes or so, the prospect of a sit down after a long walk and some intense deliberation is incredibly hard to pass up. So besides the fact that you can grab a ridiculously cheap cup of coffee or tea, which you can even get for free if you're a family member, architecturally what's quite interesting about the IKEA restaurant is that it's one of the areas of the store that tends to be flooded with natural light. Not only is food and drink important simply for refueling, but it also releases the pleasure hormone known as dopamine, which is a great tactic in getting you to associate good vibes with a certain place. And what's more, an abundance of natural sunlight, especially after an extended period of being without it, causes the body to release another feel-good hormone called serotonin, which contributes towards feelings of calm and focus. This is all very clever as it ensures that IKEA make sure that you are having a good time during this whole journey. And also from another angle, when it comes to streamlining IKEA's initial construction costs, considering that windows are typically one of the most expensive materials when it comes to the overall budget of a building, by strategically apportioning a large amount of glazing where it's going to be most effective tends to make a lot of financial sense.
While you're sitting there amidst a restaurant filled with IKEA's own furniture, you may not realize this, but you're also unwittingly drinking up that delicious IKEA Kool-Aid. As nothing in life is truly free, these affordable meals or free drinks cause you to experience feelings of reciprocity, as when you're enjoying that free coffee that you managed to grab after signing up as an IKEA family member, you're now an official part of their community, and as a result, feelings of affinity tend to follow. So as you sit back, relax, and enjoy this Swedish hospitality with everyone else enjoying their much needed fix of dopamine and serotonin, you're unknowingly one step closer to making that purchase. You'd really think that IKEA has already done a pretty great job of winning you over by this point, but oh, there is so much more. After the showroom, coffee, and meatballs, you pick up your journey back at the marketplace, which again, is just another forced route that convinces you to spend more money. In this whole new section, you're going to wind your way around a series of more open spaces, which could be their own little stores in their own right, from kitchen items to bedding to lighting and plants, where IKEA now give you the opportunity to think about all of the things that you may also need to go along with your new furniture. Interestingly, filled with inspiration from the showroom and under the effects of price anchoring, all of these items tend to feel like steals. And because by now you've likely been won over by the brand at this point, it becomes very difficult to think twice about picking up things like cushion covers or kitchen utensils, which of course all have Swedish names, which is actually genius from a branding perspective, as most likely this is a word that's not only novel to you, but you're also more likely to use a lot more brain power trying to remember it, which probably creates even a few laughs when you try saying it too. So instead of lumping all of these items in with the rest of the showroom, this section has been strategically placed later for the upsell, which is a bit like how when you're at McDonald's and the cashier asks you if you want to make your meal a large. And when using this kind of technique with a processional spatial strategy, IKEA has somehow managed to force you past not only all of their furniture, but almost every possible household item that you could possibly want from their store. And finally, we make it to the end of the road. With a cart full of household trinkets and a list of product locations, you make it to the self-serve furniture area, where you can now finally actually find all of the items that you originally set out to purchase in the first place. So now armed with a beast of a trolley, you're encouraged to go down the aisles and pick up the flat pack items yourself, with some helpful reminders of products that you may have forgotten about from the showroom along the way. But while on your way to the caches, you may also notice over to the side, their as is section. At this point, you're probably thinking you've already grabbed yourself a great deal with your new flat pack furniture and free coffee, but this section is there just to remind you that there is the chance to pick up a final bargain from their selection of pre-loved items, which are set up in their own little room, which looks a bit like its own store that's made up from particle board walls and green branding, which displays IKEA's devotion to the circular economy. So just in case you're not swayed by any of the items here, you'll finally make it to the checkouts. And of course, you know you're going to be subjected to the standard high margin checkout trinkets. And once you're finally through, you would think that everything's over, but no, 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 no. After this whole cleverly orchestrated ordeal, you're left to pick up a ridiculously cheap hot dog or frozen yogurt for one final opportunity for a kick of dopamine. And right next to this, you can pick up all sorts of Swedish snacks and even a packet of frozen meatballs to take home. And their return center is also usually right here, which subconsciously reassures you of their no quibble 365 day return policy on all items. So with dopamine flowing through your system and the satisfaction that you grabbed yourself a bargain and the fact that IKEA have your back even if you change your mind, you end up leaving the store unresentful for being being herded through this whole process like cattle. 
The real genius of this whole strategy is that IKEA have somehow convinced you to go through this entire process winningly by yourself. From discovering their items in the showroom, to picking them up in the warehouse, to even assembling them at home. Which all contributes to what has become known as the IKEA effect, where customers are more likely to have an emotional attachment to an item of furniture simply because they put it together themselves. Which makes it more likely that they will value it more highly, but also praise it more readily. Which only adds to the social proof that you tend to experience when you visit your friend's home and they tell you how much they love their new furniture. Which only creates more trust and encourages more visits to IKEA, where the cycle just repeats itself over and over. I think it's probably all a little bit too easy to say that this is just all dark and manipulative on IKEA's part, as really this is just the reality of a free market, and you kind of have to give it to IKEA because their understanding of human psychology and design has allowed them to integrate this not only into just their products, but also into the layout of their store, which is kind of genius and a little bit of an OP strategy. But anyways, that's it from me for this video as there's no sponsor. However, if you would like to support my work, go and check out how you can become a channel member or purchase any of my wallpaper packs down in the video description. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.